What is a super popular TV show or movie that you can't stand? American Idol. It used to be like raw talent. Now everyone's been training since they were three for the audition and fake as F. No real personality. It's all just a character they put together for the show. And the producers love it. DR. Phil kinda pisses me off. The Behind the Bastards episode about him made me go from mild repulsion to outright hatred of the man. I thought he was just a dumbass making content for other dumbasses but he's a real, genuine piece of garbage. Yup, love that podcast. That pose put a bottle of vodka and Zanax in the green room for an alcoholic coming on his show then put him on air and ripped into him. Any reality dating show. As a Bachelor franchise viewer I accept this. I came here to say this. My wife forces me to watch and for the first few years of our marriage I accepted it as a great trade off to leverage some extra time playing video games. Now I'm considering gouging my eyes out with a spoon to save me from having to watch this shit anymore. X Factor was is I don't even know boring as hell. And no to me I don't care if your grandma died and the last thing she told you was to sing. I can't stand the whole backstory part. It's pretty funny on American Ninja Warrior though when they spend 5 minutes going through their tragic backstory and how they're running this track for their an and then they slip and fall on the first obstacle. I used to watch real old reruns of the original Ninja Warrior. They'd run through all 100 constants for the first round in 1 or 2 episodes. No long backstory skits, just a basic introduction, maybe a piece of trivia about them, and Fassa plunt out of the gate. In Australia they had a dude a few years ago. Who said in his intro part if he made it up the warped wall he was gonna propose to his GF waiting on the sidelines cheering him on. He didn't make it up the wall, and didn't propose. I always wonder how she felt watching the episode back on TV and seeing that. Yeah, get a fed to me. Hi, my name is Timmy. My granny died two days ago. My soda spilled and I can't find my socks. Simon hitting the golden button emotionally. Any and every herd uh, we're in Alaska show on TV. They all seem incredibly staged. They're filled with people who are either playing a character or must live in rural Alaska because they would be social outcasts in civilization. Every one of those reality shows have some stupid manufactured drama that simultaneously makes the protagonist look like a genius and a refined idiot. I remember when Deadliest Catch was just about them catching crabs and trying not to die. Then it gradually turned into family drama. Weird feuds, employees acting in ways that would get them fired at any normal job, let alone one where what you do could get others hurt killed. So the deadliest catch was so deadly BC of how the fisheries were managed. There was a total catch quota so each boat would work as long as possible and disregard any danger to get as much of the total catch as they could. They changed the system to individual transferable quotas, ITQs where fishermen are allowed a set amount to catch individually based on previous fishing history. This is slightly controversial since it picks winners but stopped the fishing seasons from shrinking from months to days or even hours. Helped fish populations. Reduced risk. No need to work 48 hours in terrible weather. Increased revenues and improved the product for the consumer. Another side effect of ITQs is deadliest catch got boring so they had to mix in some bullshit drama to keep the ratings up. 90 day fiance. I liked it at first, but now it's just filled with whiny, teen-esque drama that make me wonder why they don't just break it off immediately. I get money plays a factor, but for people like the family Chantel and Stacey Darcy, I can't help but wonder why they'd put themselves out there and be constantly in the line of drama. Nothing will ever top Danielle and Mohammed. I want my sex, mam it. It went downhill since he finally left her. Riverdale, right. I don't understand how high school could be that dramatic. It's like they crank the world up to 11. But she goes to juvie. Okay. What's that like? I don't know. Jail for kids? Okay. Fine. So prisoner abuse and secret fight clubs and riots. Check. There was a lot of drama that had happened at my school. But the show didn't feel very real and I couldn't relate to it. To me it's so bad it's good spoilers I mean what's not to believe about high schoolers being presidents of middle aged motorcycle gangs, or running their own bar, or busting their own father as a serial killer, or owning a gym for underprivileged kids after being subjected to a juvenile underground fighting to the death ring, or overtaking their mom's brothel, or their mom being undercover in a suicide cult ran by Chad Michael Murray, I mean, sorry but that is quality shin my book, man, you're kinda selling me on Riverdale. 
My wife and I really liked the first few seasons and haven't been able to continue. We know it's dumb but it was at least enjoyable. I think around the time they did that chill eating routine outside the prison was when it got too dumb for us. You didn't experience the epic highs and lows of high school football, did you? S. Yes. This. I wanted it to be classic Archie. Australian here. The block. Big brother. Married at first sight. RF it. All of it. It's all sh. I'm going to the pub. I've started watching Stingers. Undercover police show that ran from the late 90s to mid 2000s. Not revolutionary, but it reminds me of a time when we actually made dramas. The Bachelor Bachelorette. I just don't understand how this show is still going. How? When I was applying for grad school programs I briefly got hooked on it. As part of the interview process you have to be on your game 100% of the time. Beaming how smart you are and all your academic accomplishments at other very smart people. After every interview I was just so sick of being smart and wanted to empty out my brain with a piece of idiocy. The Bachelor was perfect for that. I effing love it. That she's the best accidental comedy. The way they talk is super stereotypical teenagers gossiping and it's hilarious. It's terrible trash. Honestly, most of them just need some good therapy. As a gay guy who grew up around religious people being like, gay marriage will ruin the sanctity of marriage. Their absolutely deafening silence about a show like The Bachelor was infuriating. Riverdale. I mean it's a common opinion that it's a bad show but it's still insanely popular. The actors are so cheesy. I dropped out in 4th grade to run drugs to support my nana. Then you've never known the epic highs and lows of high school football. Bruh lol. That cannot be real dialogue. In case you haven't noticed. I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in. And I don't want to fit in. Have you ever seen me without this stupid hat on? That's weird. Quirky. I honestly enjoyed the first season. It's cheesy but fun. After that though it went on a roller coaster ride to so bad it's not even fun to watch. I stayed around a little bit here and there. But that underage strip tease to Mad World. Holy f I bailed around then. I don't think the actors are what's bad. They're given some really writing to work with. Also it's weird how they sexualize Archie. Other characters too. But mainly Archie. So much. The extreme sexual stuff with teenagers really turned me off the show. Like. It's not sexy for a kid to strip herself and dance in front of the adult biker gang as part of an initiation ritual. Black. Surprise no one has mentioned 13 reasons why. There's a lot more than 13 reasons why that show is terrible. I used to teach middle school and one day we had a mandatory assembly. Teachers and students were told it was an anti-bullying suicide awareness assembly. It ended up being the author of 13 reasons why. This was several years ago. When it was just a book and they were in the planning stages of the TV production. Doing a promotional tour. It was absolutely the lamest assembly I've ever attended in my life. He kept name dropping that the TV show might feature Selena Gomez. After the assembly I rented the book to see if it would work as a class novel but in the first couple chapters it had a blowjob scene and it was downhill from there. So yeah. Not something I'd have my class of 12-13 year olds read together. A couple years later the Netflix series came out and I watched it out of curiosity and because my kids were watching and talking about it. It was worse than the book because it romanticized suicide even more by actually showing the dead girl as a phantom character. The author claims that he wrote it to help prevent teen suicide but Imohi made it worse by giving a false image of suicide and finality of death. Honestly I watched a few episodes of the first season and it wasn't horrible. I was actually kinda excited to see where it went. Then it went. And I wasn't excited. True. Especially after they gutted the first season and then proceeded to milk the attention by making a second one. Oh yes. I didn't like the first season but that second one with a disturbing scene at the end in the toilet. Why did they felt compelled to show that? Story was boring as hell and this scene wasn't necessary. I think I made it to episode 2 of season 2. The first season is literally about the various ways that all the characters are terrible. Hard to watch a show about a-holes you don't give a sh about. Yeah, a lot of shows normalize stupidity. But normalizing suicide is especially damaging. To be clear. Openly discussing extreme depression and how to healthily deal with it would be good. But empowering yourself via suicide? F off. American Idol. The Voice. America's Got Talent. The Masked Singer. I was happy to see it go. Now they brought it back. 
It's all about sad backstories. Really sucks. Reminds me of the magician Shin Lim, who won AGT a few seasons ago. He said that they literally would not let him go on the show without a sob story. So he went with his carpal tunnel syndrome. Always makes me think of the Black Mirror episode about these kind of shows. That episode was so dark. One of my favorites but just brutal. Any TV show where they have an cast of teenagers who act way too mature for their age. Riverdale Legacy slash 13 Reasons Why Pretty Little Lies The Fosters ETC etc. Feel like I'm watching a show about 30 year olds in 15 18 year old bodies. Nope. You're watching 30 year olds in 25 year olds bodies. Playing 15 18 year olds. Ugh I am over the whole high school drama bullshit that is in nearly every single fantasy show I want to watch. Like can't I just see cool fairies and mythological creatures and magic without suffering through teenage drama? I want mature magic and the whole magical school setting has been worn to threads. Bachelor or Bachelorette? Bachelor in Paradise, however, is a brilliant formula for a total show. Let's get a bunch of stereotypically attractive people who have had their hearts broken on national TV together on a beach. Get them drunk. Manufacture perfect setups for dating and promiscuity. Then film it. Big Brother I don't know why but people love that show in my country, Nigeria. For just going there to enjoy luxury win prizes and be boring and immature on television and to make it worse that show was meant for people that were poor or looking for opportunities to showcase their talents but instead it is filled with rich grown adults who just want to be verified on Instagram really annoys me every time. It all started with Big Brother Africa which was interesting and fascinating to see people from different countries with different accents and cultures all in one house and as you might guess that showed it well but Big Brother Africa stopped airing for whatever reason and my country decided to capitalize on it and call it Big Brother Nature but hosted in South Africa for some reason and the first one was pretty good but as it went on it became terrible. There is a season airing now in Nigeria and from what I can see on social media it looks boring and bland and filled with men that looks like they are in their late 30s and lied in their assume. It was an interesting concept back at the very beginning something completely unique that had never been done before. And an interesting insight into the people. The problem was that past the initial few runs, we all realized that it wasn't that interesting once the novelty wore off. So they had to start screwing with it to make interesting TV. And the contestants were all going in with ulterior motives and playing for the cameras more. A better public science experiment than an entertainment show. Literally any reality show. Even things that I might be moderately interested in have this stupid drama injected in where I'm supposed to care about these people's problems. Like damn. Just drive the truck on the ice road and stop complaining. In the same vein talent shows any entertainment i might get from the actual talent is spoiled by the camera constantly cutting to nick cannon or whoever else making fake reaction faces every five seconds any talent show is ruined once they let kids on then it just becomes omg look how cute they are and the kid could just be doing armpit farts and still win i feel the same way the only show i'd give an exception to is great british bake off that show is a treasure i started making it had a breakdown Bonapate it. Mississippi. Wait, that is for another thread. The crossover we never knew we needed. Something tells me none of my friends will get this reference lol. Fine hell dude. Actually didn't expect that. And yeah, Mississippi is the correct answer here. For those confused, this is a joke about how in another Ask Reddit thread, everyone was saying Mississippi. You know you're addicted to Reddit if you instantly get a reference like this. Loved it. I have a hard time believing that anyone thinks two broke girls is funny. Like how does it even get made in the first place? Let alone get into syndication. Cleavage. They show lots of cleavage. Yes. I think the answer here is cat. I took her the shower and had left the TV on in the other room. After I got out, that show had come on and I could hear it playing as I was toweling off and getting dressed. Just hearing it, the dialogue was honestly non-stop. Canned laughter inexplicably pause repeat it just went on and on like that it might as well have had every other line be that's what she said yeah it came on a few times when i turned on the tv for background noise it was non-stop sexual innuendos or the one character making fun of the other's sex life and i just thought is this seriously the only thing they can talk about this is getting lame stifler's mum was in it glee 
I hated Rachel to the point I didn't even make it to the halfway point of season 1. Glee was really confusing because at times the show seemed 100% self-aware that she was supposed to be an unlikable protagonist and a parody of theatre kids like that but then at other times she was presented with complete sincerity as a hero without any irony whatsoever. That also describes Glee as a whole tbh like it flip flopped between being self aware and ironic and being completely tone deaf and self important with zero irony or self awareness very unartfully. Funny enough, the actress was just in the news like yesterday, because she's apparently a rancid diva that's even worse than the character Rachel Berry. Anyway, so little backstory first for those not in the know. On the show Glee, Rachel eventually moved to Nick and gets the lead in Funny Girl opening on Broadway. Funny Girl originally starred Barbara Streisand and Babs was an idol not only of the character Rachel Berry but her real life actress, Lee Michelle. So after Glee, Ryan Murphy the showrunner of Glee, he actually buys the rights to Funny Girl so that he can stage a Broadway production and let Miss Lee Michelle star in it in real life just like Rachel Berry did on the show. It stalled and someone else got the rights from Murphy but the show was still trying to get produced and Lee was always the top contender for landing the lead role when it eventually got made. Then a year or two ago all kinds of bad stories came out about her. There were always rumors but now her co-stars were putting her bad antics out there and backing each other up. Still though it seemed like she was destined for starring on Broadway in Funny Girl when it finally got made. Then yesterday it was announced Funny Girl was finally being made and Beanie Feldstein, and not Lee Michelle, was cast as the lead. Enjoy the schadenfreude. Literally anything on TLC. Laughing as roommate is hooked on 90 Day Fiancé and one of its spin-offs. 90 Day Fiancé really is like staring at a car crash and not being able to look away. It's my guilty pleasure show lol. And to think TLC actually began as the learning channel. Everything on that network is garbage. Keeping up with the Kardashians. There should be a show for when they are not around and call it keep the Kardashians away. It will make more sense to be watched. This would be an amazing tower defense game. Most of CW's DC shows. Mainly Batwoman. I honestly think that Batwoman is the most poorly, insultingly written shows I've ever seen. The shows were never good. But in the early seasons I was at least entertained by the Flash and Supergirl. They've devolved to the point of being unwatchable. I'm convinced that they're saving money by never ever revising a script. The Flash is basically a bunch of incredibly convoluted pseudoscience and nonsensical origins of threats that they defeat with an equally convoluted regurgitation of said pseudoscience that someone either instantly invents a machine to fix or bury motivational speech s away. Supergirl tries soo hard to be woke and draw the most painfully transparent real world parallels that they can. So hard, in fact that they do so at the expense of all else including writing anything close to a coherent solid storyline. The new Superman and Lois is so far beyond either of those shows in terms of writing and production values. I'm enjoying it so far, but dreading the day they decide to phone it in like every other Arrowverse show inevitably ends up doing. I unashamedly love the first season of The Flash. Second season is pretty good emo too. I think I mainly just enjoy the reverse Flash and Zoom scenes. First season reverse flash was something else. I stopped watching after season 3 though and looking at clips of it I don't even recognize it anymore. The first two seasons of flash and arrow were good, but anything after that has been hot garbage. I saw a clip the other day where flash had turned lightning bolts into lightsabers and couldn't be glad or I stopped watching when they were at their peak. Grey's Anatomy. How was that going for like 12 seasons? That may be exaggerating I don't remember the exact number of seasons. Yeah let's watch them perform surgery for the hundredth time. It's at 18 now actually and I think is renewed for at least 20. Joke's on you. It's 18. Real housewives of whatever. Wherever. Grammatically correct but not as disdainfully correct. The masked singer. I'm actually insulted. As a human being. That other human beings willingly choose to watch this steaming pile of sh. The judges are all like is it Beyonce? Is it Lady Gaga? Cher maybe? Oh. No. It's actually Jimmy Walker from Good Times. Thanks a lot. Now next season. Someone will be dressed as a steaming pile of sh. I watched like 15 minutes of this show out of morbid curiosity and it felt like something the capital from the Hunger Games would produce. Just pure. 100% soulless manufactured crap. Keeping up with the Kardashians. DR Oz. DR Phil. 
Jerry Springer Show, Wendy Willems, any of that reality TV sh that's just pure filth. Riverdale. The Bachelor Bachelorette. 13 Reasons Why. Anything on Nick after Ikeli. I used to love how I met your mother but now every time I try to watch it Ted Mosby's character makes me want to die he's so annoying and whiny. American Idol. Anything on Bravo. My mom likes it. But it's just a bunch of rich wives that somehow always hates each other, and have to solve it like children. I get the point of reality shows are supposed to be around drama like this, but there's a line between drama, and straight up outrageous and stupid. The only show I like on there is Married to Medicine, because it shows women who are actually smart and make their own money. Yes there is drama, but I'm guessing since they didn't always rely on their husbands to pay their way out of it, they handle it like adults, and move on. Top Chef is one of the few great shows on Bravo as well. Keeping up with the Kardashians. Thank goodness it's over with. Love Island. Man this show is so popular in jail. It's so funny. I work as a CEO. The inmates lou of the drama like I'm talking gen pop gang bangers. Hilarious. Hey fellow company. I work in New York. I haven't worked days in a while. Midnighter. But when I did the inmates would go nuts for DBZ. Every weekend the dorm would tune both TVS and to see what felt like two hours of Dragon Ball. I loved hanging out at my desk watching them get all hyped during the Cell tournament. I used to talk anime with most of them. I still see lots of manga floating around the dorm. I see them reading it before we turn the cell lights out at 1am. Stay safe bud and have fun. Big Bang Theory. What are you doing? Playing Dungeons and Dragons laugh track plays. It's a show that is advertised as geeky while mocking geeks and geek culture. I to hate it. It's not even tongue in cheek. It's mostly just mean about it. The Big Bang Theory laughs at geeks. If you are looking for a show that laughs with geeks, I'd recommend something like Community. It's about smart people. It's not for smart people.